Hey, there Hello. she is. How, How are you? you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for doing this. Let me fix this real quick so the top of my head isn't cut off. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, congratulations We're, on a wonderful launch day and launch week. Thank you so much, Judge Faith. It's been, uh, it's been one of those um, Ephesians 3.20 exceedingly abundant. I know you know all about it with you know all the great things that are happening with you. But uh, but I'm just I'm really really thrilled excited for this moment. Are well, you? You should be because I've been digging into this book since the weekend, <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, it's pretty incredible. Wow, wow, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I um you know I read a lot of books. Just yes, just wrote do. one myself last year, and uh, when I got the call from your team to talk about balance and dating, you know that's right up my alley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I married your good friend. Kenny yes, you did. Three years ago, but before that, I was out in dating streets a long time. How long? <laughs> so, uh, dating is an art. They used to call me Picasso <laughs> because I had mastered that art. <laughs> I love it. Now, how long were you were you single? How long were you date before you and Kenny got together? Fifteen years. Fifteen wow. years. Yep. I moved to New York right after I graduated law school and decided I was, you know, officially adulting in the greatest city in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was time for me to meet my husband. That's what mm -hmm. I said to myself. Right. But, uh, God had a different plan and a different path. And uh, it took me 15 years for me to meet mm -hmm. the man that I would eventually marry and uh, wouldn't change a thing about the journey and mm. everything I learned and the lessons along the way. That's powerful. So in hindsight, you look at those 15 years and are you... Do you have the, are you under the sentiment of not one day sooner? Like, as you look back and you look at all that happened in those 15 years? Yeah, I look at it as my time of growth and development. And, you know, we're all on different journeys. And that's the wonderful thing about life. And what I loved about some things you wrote in your book, embracing your own journey and embracing your own path to greatness, whatever that is, and not letting other people define that for you. Mm. So when you talked about in, in your book, when you talked about this, when you talked about the people, you, you knew people in amazing, wonderful relationships. Mm -hmm. And those relationships were so successful because of how they lived when they were single mm -hmm. and how they worked and learned and developed themselves as single people. And I would love for you to expound on that a little bit because that is a wonderful point that a lot of single women like me had to embrace and learn before I was ready to meet my husband. Absolutely. Uh, so that's the chapter, There's No Team in I. That's one of my favorite chapters where it is a, obviously it's a play on the popular phrase, there's no I in team. But, uh, but you're right, a lot of times we look at a couple and we are marveling at where they are now and we're like, whoa, I want that. But when I look at the people that I admire, the people that are in relationships, they were whole and healthy before they got into this relationship. In fact, I think the reason why the relationship is thriving now is because they didn't bring their broken, you know, selves into that relationship or, you know, maybe in some cases along the journey, they got whole, but, you know, I always say two halves don't make a whole and, and people struggle and I understand it, I get it, I've been there. They struggle with being alone because mm -hmm. they feel like to be alone is some sort of a curse, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I get it, we're human, we wanna connect with people and, and you know, we're, we're, we're wired for that. But you, we also have to see the value in being alone. And uh, you know, I love that word, I wanted to look up that word and really understand what the original meaning of the word alone is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I found something that was pretty interesting. Most people think that alone means you're at a deficit, you know, poor that person over there in the restaurant all by themselves, all quote unquote alone, poor them. Let me go over there and strike up a conversation. They may not want you to strike up a conversation. They may have come to a place where they appreciate being alone. And so that word alone comes from the Latin phrase al ana. And there is nothing negative about al ana. In fact, al ana means all one. So, so, so we have to redefine, this is for single people who are dating, we have to redefine what it means to be alone. Alone doesn't mean that, that you are in trouble. It is the environment that allows you to become our honor or our all one so that you can find somebody else who is our honor, our one. And now together 
you've got this incredible thing that is not based on codependency, mm -hmm. but based on clarity and purpose and power. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That was a really, I believe, helpful point in the book. Oh, it was, it was fantastic because you actually go into the difference between being alone and being lonely. Yes. Those are two different things. Yes. And uh, I love the way you talked about that because I remember uh, for me, I, I remember I didn't, I didn't want to look for somebody to make me happy. Mm. And I thought that that would be a, a big mistake because if somebody can make me happy, then they can make me sad. Wow. If they can make me happy, then they can make me depressed. I feel like I'm giving all my power away if I'm looking for someone to make me happy. Mm. So making the decision to look for someone who added to the happiness that was already in my life. Wow. And when you talked about this alone versus lonely, I yeah. was fine on my own, being <laughs> happy, living my life until I met that person who was going to add to it. You, so that you know, was an amazing point in your book. You know what's powerful is like, you you have credibility. Like, you know, you're, you're not somebody that was single for, for three months or single for six months or even a year. You were single for 15 years. And, and that just, you know, because sometimes people will look at you and be like, okay, but you know, you, you're married to this incredible man. You've got this incredible career. You, you know, you're an author. You've got amazing books. You're doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you, got, you have street cred. You have single street cred. No, I did this for 15 years. I, I learned how to be good with me. I, I was talking to one of my friends the other day and, and he was like, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sleep, you know, by myself, you know? And I'm like, don't look at it that way. You're not sleeping by yourself. You're sleeping with yourself. You, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? So and I you love like that person you're sleeping with. Say again. That's it. And do you like the person you're sleeping with? You're sleeping with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a whole, now that's a whole nother thing, but, mm -hmm. but no, you've got credibility. I think that that's why, you know, this conversation with you is so meaningful is because you did it. I didn't know it was 15 years. I knew that you had really, you know, to a certain degree, I'm, I'm going to use this term. I feel like I can use it. You, you mastered being alone, you know? And uh, so that means that you had to master a lot of things, you know, in the book I talk about, self-love but then there's also self-like liking yourself you Absolutely. know but anyway i'm gonna stop because i know you you've got some nuggets that, that you're gonna well one thing that i thought another there, there are so many great points you made uh, throughout the book about balance but one that really resonated with me and i think a lot of single people will identify this you talked about making decisions based on fear Mm, yeah and fear-based decisions those decisions that are aiming to preserve rather than prosper mm -hmm. because i remember dating and you know once you've dated for a while and you're an adult you're going through life you've probably experienced some heartbreak mm -hmm. betrayal rejection all of those things and if you're not really careful you can internalize those things and then you start making decisions based on fear um, which, which is really not helping you. You think if you're protecting yourself, but what you're really doing is poisoning your perspective. Wow. And you talk about this in the book that there will, that fear, there will always be loss when fear drives anything. Yeah. And your relationships are no different. Can you, can you expound on that? Because it's such a powerful point. Yeah. You know, some people, there's an argument in the world right now about fear and whether fear helps you or hurts you. And the people who argue for fear say that fear, you know, it makes you alert, you know, and if you're alert, you know, you can, you can avoid calamity, et cetera. And I understand kind of what they're saying, but, but the only thing about fear is that fear, in order to, when you're governed by fear, you're governed by something negative, you know, because fear, fear you're not afraid of something positive. You're afraid of something negative, potentially something negative happening. I, I, I'll lose this relationship. Uh, I, I'll lose this job if I say no. I'll lose something. And studies show that that if you ruminate on anything negative, it actually will it builds up protein deposits in your brain, which is one of the things that sets on early dementia. Mm -hmm. So so you you think that you're helping yourself, but in the long run, you're actually hurting yourself. And then. When you're fearful, you can't bring, I love you, you said poisoning your perspective. When, you, when you're fearful, you don't bring your best self to the moment because, because you're right, your, your perspective is poisoned. You're in this place of desperation. Uh, you, you are blinded from seeing, particularly as it relates to relationships, you're so afraid of being by yourself, right? And, but we all know that our honor is actually a good thing. You're so afraid of being by yourself 
that you will hold on to something or pursue something that if your mentality, if your perspective wasn't poison, you would realize that, no, this is actually bad for me. That's right. And so, and so we can't let fear drive the car. Listen, fear comes up. We all have, have bouts with it, but we have to get rid of it immediately so that we can think clearly and bring all of ourselves, bring our best self to the decision-making process. I remember Pastor Teray when I was uh, dating and I used to be afraid that someone wouldn't like me for one reason or another. So I would become a, a, a chameleon in a sense. If I was dating an accountant and all of a sudden I was in the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I date a preacher. I was in church every Sunday, Wednesday, you know, just trying to, trying to, uh, you're so concerned about people liking you that you're turning into something that you're not. I, I did go to church. I want you to know. <laughs> yeah. I was going those extra days. Right, things. right. But uh, turning into something that you're not, instead of just embracing who you are mm. and allowing the right person to show up to appreciate who you really are. Mm. Wow. And so, and, and then there was another really great point that you made here, because I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people because uh, in how you deal with breakups, you mm. talked about some of the uh, business um, challenges mm. you went through in the last several years. And you said that as you went through these challenges and these losses is what you described them as, mm -hmm. you had been winning for yeah. a long time. You had all this success. You say you realized in that moment that you knew how to win, but mm -hmm. you didn't know how to, but you said you knew how to win, but you didn't know how to lose. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That, that hit me. Yeah. And I often find that when people are going through, uh, when they're dating and they're going through a relationship that ends mm. or they're going through a breakup. One of the reasons why I wrote my book is because I wanted to share, how do you, how do you deal with that? How mm. do you handle it? How do you deal with the loss? And some of the points you made, I thought were really incredible because you applied them not only to business, but also to relationships. Mm. Because, you know, you see a lot of people, they, they go through breakups and they fall apart. Mm. You know, they think this is the end of the world. Mm. And, and what advice do you have for somebody who is going through a loss, going through a breakup to encourage them today? I, I would, first of all, it hurts. When it, it, there's no breakup. Mo I won't say no. Most breakups hurt real bad. It just, mm -hmm. it is what it is. That's why even when I'm raising my kids, when they're, you know, one, thank God I got married recently. But I used to tell them early on, guard your heart, you know, because, mm -hmm. man, you, you know, it, it's precious. And if you give it to somebody... And, and, and something happens and you got to try to get it back. That process of getting your heart back is, 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 is treacherous. treacherous. It's just, it's painful. So first of all, I, I empathize with you. If you're going through a breakup or if you know you need to go through a breakup, but you're struggling with making the decision. Mm -hmm. um, my, my advice to you is to remember that the pain is for a season, mm -hmm. but, but the freedom that you're going to have um, the, the, the better opportunities, you regaining yourself, what you're going to get. Um, let, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make it biblical. Let me, let me rewind. There's a passage that says, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed mm -hmm. are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. That's so powerful because essentially what Jesus is teaching in that is he's saying in this life, you are going to have to mourn something. If you're going to be everything that God has created you to be, if you're going to live the life that you've been praying for, believing for, studying for, doing all of the internal work for, mm -hmm. you're going to have to mourn, which means that you're going to have to lay some things down. It's a part of the process. I don't want you to think that a breakup is unnatural or unnormal for you to separate yourself from a person, from a job, from a, from a crew, from a community, whatever it is, that's actually normal. But the promise in scripture is that, first of all, there's a blessing in it and then second of all, he said, listen, be comforted. So my, my encouragement to you, well, my advice to you is to go through with it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and let me just give you a little bit of tidbit on this. You deciding that it's time to go for you is not a negotiation. It, you don't need the other party's approval to make a move. Once, once you have come to a place within yourself where you know that this is the best decision for you as no matter how much it hurts, 
Be decisive. Don't don't let somebody come in and say, well, I don't understand. I don't get it. I need you. Look, let's get on the phone so you can explain it to me. No, 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 no. I, I, I've made it clear, you know, and, and, and it's not to be, you know, uh, dishonoring or, you know, or, uh, you know, um, but it's not that you're being dishonorable, but you have to be decisive. So be decisive and then know the, my encouragement to you is that you're going to be comforted. It's just a season. Your heart will mend. And when it mends, when you come back together, you're going to be better, stronger, wiser, and aligned in position for the real thing that God has for you. And, and, and add, to add to that, what you said in the book, learn the lesson. Mm. Because there's a lesson in absolutely everything you go through, and that includes a relationship ending. It is ending for a reason. Whether mm. or not you're ready for it, whether or not you even want it, it is ending for a reason. And when you embrace the lesson and you decide to radically accept what's being moved out of your life for a reason without mm. even knowing the why, you don't need to know the why. But when you embrace it and you learn the lesson, that's how you're able to move forward and be successful and be ready for the person that God has for you. So when you talked about that in the book, going through those losses, going through those challenging times, but it was about learning the lesson. See, when you know there's a lesson, you don't fight for yeah. something to stay in something that's not right for you. If you know that there's a lesson in it, you're not going to be, you know, we're human. There's going to be hurt. There's going to be pain. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. You mm -hmm. will not suffer if you know that there's something better for you because this is being moved out of your life for a reason. So when you talked about learning those lessons, I said, that is absolutely key. So wow. I, I was just, there was just nug nugget after nugget after nugget in this book. You talked a lot about business, but uh, we wanted to come on this live today to talk about balance in dating. And I was so excited when I was reading it and how you applied so much of the principles to love and relationships, because I thought that it's just really essential. So many of these principles you can apply across the board. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's wonderful. It's an amazing book for all of my followers who are looking and listening right now. It's really important that you support the book <laughs> the first week that these books come out. Mm -hmm. It's really important time. So please go and pick up a copy. It will bless your life. You will not be disappointed. Awesome. Thank you so much, Judge Faith. This is, let me tell you something. We got to do this again or do something again. First, y'all got to come over and, I, I and, and have dinner, you know, because what, what you're sharing and what you're about and your story and your testimony, I, I say this often. Some people perform signs and wonders. Others are signs and wonders. Mm. And you and your awesome husband are, are signs and wonders. And I'm so grateful for this conversation. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. You have been a good friend to my husband for a very long time. And he's told me about yeah. how you supported him through some difficult times. So, um, Thank you for being who you are, not just in front of the people, but mm -hmm. outside of the lights and the cameras. You've been a really good friend to him. So uh, thank you for that, Pastor Trey. It was good to talk to you today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Blessings. Bye-bye.